Some people say that you know the pilgrim if you send the bag. I felt like a cheater. There was this thought in my head of, am I less of a pilgrim if I send the bag? But there is something else which is actually a problem. So today we're going to talk about sending the bag. What is the procedure? How difficult is that? And, and all the things that you need to know to, to feel comfortable of sending the bag. Openness is the bridge that allows us to embrace the richness of different perspectives and cultures. We're going to talk about... Community dinners. A way to connect with other pilgrims from different cultures. That brings us the connection to the food. What kind of food you can expect, what kind of diet you might have out in Camino and... And how to budget around the food. So we're also going to answer many questions about the retreat that we're going to hold next year in May and September. Also we have an interview with Rocio who went and did the French Camino and she had the similar problem to yours. So how did you feel when you had to send the bag? Well, the first days I, I didn't want to because I felt like I, I felt like a cheater. And then you see people older than you that are going with the bags and they don't have any problem. You are 30 and you are in pain. So you, I felt proud, no? I didn't want to do that. Mm -hmm. The problem with the bag started since the Pyrenees. We, I had problems with the Pyrenees, uh, trying to fix the bag to adjust it better, better, but nothing would work. And then we got to Pamplona and we decided to have an extra day off to rest and see if my bag would go back to normal. The bag, and the bag wouldn't, go, wouldn't get better. Mm -hmm. So I remember you saying, the bag is hurting, you have to send the bag. I did it once, so don't worry, a lot of people do it. Yeah, I did it once. I did it once on the Camino Primitivo. I was going downhill and, and my knee got swollen. And I had the choice of, of stopping for I don't know how many days or sending the bag away or finishing the Camino. But there is something else which is actually a problem. So and there is this thought or this belief that you have to suffer. Mm -hmm. The pilgrim suffers. Mm -hmm. So if you send the bag, it's because you don't want to suffer. Mm. Yeah, I suppose in the modern society, uh, when we do everything, you know, the easy way, that's the easy solution. But there are cases, I think it might be necessary to send the bag. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in the medieval <laughs> times, when you overparked, you take a donkey with you, you know? <laughs> in the modern times, you, you can afford the donkey. So you simply send the bag from one stage to another. I remember you were upset, big time. You were in the bed and, and you were like, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. It's like, come on, it's not a big issue. It's mainly about the pride. It's uh, all about the pride, this the is... ego. And it took, it took you a while, actually, no? It took you a while to get through well, that. Until 10 o'clock p.m., 10 p.m. No, the next day it took you a while to, to, ah. to get to my um, idea that we don't feel like walking with the backpack, no? You know, it's funny thing, it's funny thing for everyone who, who maybe can identify themselves. She actually didn't take a backpack, but what she did, she take five different bags, put them on the body, a bag one back here, another little bag here. And with food, yeah. Another, and so it, it looked like she was super packed, but she didn't have a bag, you know? So I was like, why are you, why are you pretending to have? I wasn't pretending, but I was feeling guilty that you were carrying things and I wasn't. Mm. So I wanted to take the load of you. Mm. I was feeling guilty. Yeah. Backpack issue is not really about backpack. It's about your identity of, do you feel, how do you feel with yourself? And also, what do you want to prove and mm. to whom? Mm. When you carry on with your backpack and it's hurting, who do you want to prove to and what? How do you send your bag from so one the place to another? The procedure is quite simple to send a bag from one place to the other. Mm -hmm. Usually the um, accommodation whatever it is, if it's private, public, donative or whatever, they have an envelope from the company, from different company. And there you find the telephone number. So you pick up the envelope, you text this um, company and you say, I'm staying here tonight and tomorrow I'm going to go to the next place. Do you have to speak Spanish? No, 
there's no need. You just need to write where you're staying uh, from, you write where you're staying to where you are going. So they come, they pick the bag in the morning and they take it to another location. Uh, usually, um, when, once you are there, once you get to the destination point, the bag is already there. So you just put the money in the envelope, you attach it to the, um, to the backpack and you're good to go. So depending of the stages, depending of, of many stages, and we also talk about the different Caminos, Camino Portuguese and yeah. Camino del Norte and Camino uh, French Camino. It costs up to eight euros. And um, with the cheapest, obviously, would be the more popular way with which we paid four. But farther from Santiago, we used to pay six, no? Six euros, yeah. You used to yeah. pay six euros. But it's quite a, an easy process. By the way, we are Camino Teles. It's all about the transformation in the long distance walking. Long distance walking is allow you to understand yourself. And this is what the transformation is, understanding yourself better. Once you know yourself, uh, you can be a free person. Hmm. I think Camino Teles stand for going out of your comfort zone in a different setting and looking at your life from a different perspective. And remember, you can be Camino Tellers as well. All you have to do, you have to subscribe to this channel. There is a red button, just press it. If you like what we do, there is a like button. And if you wish to share your story in the comments just down there below, why you do doing the Camino, what is your reason and what is the date, put it and share it with us. Talking about the backpack, it would be nice to hear the stories or the opinion from other pilgrims that we met along the way. Oh yeah, let's listen to it. Yeah. So my name is Rocio. I'm 34 years old. I'm actually from Argentina, but I live in Brazil. Okay. When did you start your Camino? Uh, I think it was six days ago, maybe. Days yeah. Ago. <laughs> did you start from France? From France, yeah, Jean Sangier de la Po. Yeah, mm -hmm. from there. Are you planning to get to Santiago? Well, yeah, it's my plan. Okay. I hopefully I get there. <laughs> so is it the first time you're doing Camino? First time. Where did you hear about it? Uh, from my friends. They are doing for the second time okay. and they invited us, me and my husband. So yeah, was from there. Did you have any expectation about the Camino? Uh, yeah, worry about the time. Could be like a long time if walk you know, it's low, but yeah, I took a vacation to do this. So I'm trying to relax myself and try to know, you know, pushing myself and doing a lot of kilometers per day. I'm walking while I can, so. What's your pace? How many kilometers per day are you walking? 20, 20 21, kilometers. yeah, maybe more, but yeah, 20, 20 kilometers. And how do you feel with your equipment, with your shoes, with your backpack? I was okay, but two days ago I hurt my feet, my right feet. So I started to feel a lot of, a lot of pain. And because of that, I was like, I got a, lot, a bit of sad because of it. And then I started to, you know, concentrate myself on other things, not to focus on my, my pain. And, and today I decided to send my bag. So I, today I feel more uh, light. I'm feeling better today. Did you have any resistance inside of you to uh, send the bag away? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> Why? Um, I don't know, it's because I backpacked, I was backpacker two, uh, years ago in Asia. Um, it's something I, I, I don't know how to explain that, but it's something inside of us, like in a voice, in their voice, saying, the, saying like, no, if you're sending your bag or something like this, you're not a real caminante, pellegrino, you're not real, like backpacker, you know what I mean? Like I was, yeah, but um, yeah, I just give up this, you know, nonsense, um, and send away my bag. Yeah. yeah, I'm feeling well, better than two days ago. Yeah, yeah. I think it's really important to listen yourself, you know, because some people could say like, no, don't say that, or send it. I was like, 
in between, you know, these two like opinions, random opinions. But I really try because I think it's a hard decision to take it. So in situations like this, I try to, you know, meditate of it, you know, like, okay, if I feel in pain, what is the point walking with pain? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think like if you feel, if your body is speaking to you, like listen to, I think this is important. No matter what, like, oh, Pellegrino say that or Pellegrino say this. No, just listen yourself and do what is best for you. <laughs> <laughs> So I think it was the day number six we went from uh, Pamplona to Terga, purposely. Purposely, because normally people go to Puente de la Reina, but as we like small little places, we decided just to stay somewhere in between. And in Terga were two albergues. Five. One in front of the other. One in front of the other, everyone knows each other. One street, few houses, one shop, 15 bars, because we're in Spain. <laughs> So, uh, so we arrived in the um, albergue and we were really up to 10 people. We weren't many. Mm -hmm. They had these big gardens where you could already stay there, lay down, wash your clothes and hang up with people. The owners were a couple from Venezuela. 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 And they organized a beautiful community dinner. They had different options with meat, fish or vegetarian. Mm -hmm. We joined the community dinner because that's the best way to already connect with people that otherwise you wouldn't talk to, maybe, no? The perfect way to join and to put people together, no? Yeah. Food. You, Food. you, you Italian, you Food know. Food and wine. Food and wine usually it's the best way to connect people. So for everyone who's coming from far away, who only speaks one or two languages, don't be afraid. If the food is there, if the wine is there, the, the after wine you are fluent. Conversation will flow by any chance. And I think when you when you decide to do the Camino, you might be a little bit afraid about connecting to people that you don't know. Yeah, I I see, for example, when my parents came, then they had a lot of thoughts. I cannot talk to people because I cannot speak their language. Mm -hmm. And I think it comes with another of the big lessons of Camino de Santiago, which is openness. And it happened to be a subject in our great journal. Yeah, we put it because it's a big thing. Mm -hmm. It's a big thing. A lot of people don't, don't talk to people because they feel embarrassed, they feel limited, they feel that they don't have anything to talk about with other people, they feel shy. Openness is the bridge that allows us to, to embrace the richness of different perspectives and cultures. Yeah, it may be challenging at first to overcome any shyness or language barriers, but it is worth the effort to connect with others who share your journey. You know, I remember, I remember the story like someone walked with a person that he didn't understand each other for days. I remember, I was thinking it was one of our French friends, French lady friends. She walked with someone from Korea without understanding her for three days. And she enjoyed it so much. How cool, no? And what is the other ways that you, you can open yourself on the Camino de Santiago? When you're walking and you find other pilgrims walking or you can approach them, talk to them. Buen Camino. There is a greeting called Buen Camino. Which it means like, have a good Camino. And that could spark a beautiful conversation between people, no? But there is a way. Also, remember there's the way and sometimes simple smile or simple a helping hand could be um, a way of communicating a lot. Yeah, but there are different ways to connect with other pilgrims. One is the community meals. The other one is walking with someone or there are the sharing circle mm -hmm. in the albergues or the cooking together, preparing the table together, setting up or cleaning together after dinner. So there are different ways of that you can connect with other pilgrims. And there are many other subjects on our journal from fears. Let me open one by chance and see the topic of the day. Acceptance. Acceptance. Cliche. Fears. Many of them. And this self empowerment. This obviously will help you to understand better yourself and the Camino itself. 
Uh, so if you're feeling like having one, this is five star on Amazon. Remember to leave a review because we like reviews. Yeah. Food. Uh, what did we have? What food normally do you have in these uh, community dinners? Really depends on the place. I remember in this place in having chicken with salad and the dessert. Mm -hmm. There are different options. Either you have a three course meal, mm -hmm. the starter, the main course and the dessert. Okay. Or you have a big plate, a bit of everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. The price ranges from 10 to 15 in the French, uh, in the French Camino, mm -hmm. because in Portugal it was cheaper. In other places, they may have other prices. Probably Camino del Norte would be a bit more expensive, but but yeah, that's the, like a normal range of prices. Yeah. Can you find the community dinner in every alberga? Not in everyone. You know, some places say no, but they have a bar or restaurant next to the albergues which offer a pilgrim menu, mm -hmm. which is the same. The community dinner or pilgrim menu usually have the same uh, items, starter, main course and, and dessert. The price is similar. And the good thing is that also if you have dietary requirements, special dietary requirements, like if you're a vegetarian, celiac. celiac, you can ask. You can ask and they can uh, cater for it. We met a child, he was I think 12 years old, oh, maybe 15 years old, and he was celiac and he didn't have any problem. Mm -hmm. He would always say, well, he was stronger with the grandma, so she would always say that he's celiac and they would always cook something for him. If you're vegetarian or vegan, is it easy to get any food? Pain is made out of... Meat. <laughs> meat and dairy. And you have a lot of tortilla. Eggs. Everything is made out of, yeah, it's made with eggs, cheese. Yeah, if you want to do vegetarian, vegetarian Camino, I think you have to go to India. That would be the easiest way. There is a website uh, and they have a list of albergues. They only provide the vegetarian food. We're going to put it in the description. And I remember we met also Rocio's, Rocio's boyfriend. He was vegan and he was cooking for himself in the albergue. I think another of this good important information is whenever you choosing the albergue, you ask if they have a kitchen you can use or if they have a community dinner because many of the places also, they have only places to stay. Yeah, no, no kitchen. It might be a bit more costly than to organize yourself and just to eat outside. Yeah. I remember we used to do uh, like a one picnic a day. So we used to buy products from the supermarkets or from any other convenience shops. And then we used to have one community dinner just to be with people, just to get the good vibe and the community spirit, no? To share some food. And we could find, and pretty much we could find many of the products in, in the shops. So 2024 Camino is coming. Yeah, we are gonna, we are getting ready for it in the form of organizing retreats at the starting point of Camino Frances, Which close is? to San Chopier de Po. Uh -huh. Uh, so in May and September, we're going to have a retreat, four days retreats. Four days retreats. Four days retreats, three nights. So you can come acclimatize, get rid of the jet lag. We're going to discover many of the subjects from the journal. Yeah, it's a bit the extension of the journal. Uh, get in the mindset of the Camino, meet other like-minded pilgrims and... Have set, some fun. Have some fun, ponder on your life and set off for your journey. With everyone who's going to attend the retreat, we are going to prepare for Camino on different levels. A few months before, we are going to start meeting online through Zoom calls, through groups, um, and answer all the questions that every one of us has. And uh, we are going to have calls how to prepare physically, how, what to pack, anything logistically, how to get to the starting point. And but also, the, we are going to explore different levels, the ritual, the emotional. So it's a whole preparation on different levels. Sometimes it can be complicated, especially in this different part of the world, in these places that you don't speak the language, and you're already thrown into deep sea of go and get to another part of the country. It can be overwhelming. For many, it's the first time they travel on their own. So Guys, we, we've been there. We know how does it feel. And that's why we're having and holding this space for, for anyone who will actually need it. Yeah, it's a safe space. 
For more information, as always, go to the description. There is a link over there. Fill up the form yeah, with all the information and we are gonna email to you when we have the finalized details. And don't forget limited spaces as always. We keep it small, we keep it really familiar about the quantity, but rather about the quality, yeah? yeah. Another episode of the Camino Tellers podcast and another of a few important lessons to be learned. I don't need to prove anything to anyone. Yeah. My health is more important than my ego. Mm -hmm. Just go, go easy with yourself. Don't be harsh on yourself. Mm -hmm. Because this body is the only thing you have until the end. I, I think I've learned that sometimes you only need a smile to open someone else's heart and start to communicate and be with others, even without speaking the language. The openness and approaching the situations, not only people, but also situations, can be a beautiful guide for deepening the understanding of Camino de Santiago. An example is that right in Uterga, we met this French lady, two French ladies. Chuf. And we didn't really speak a common language. I mean, they could speak French, of course, and a little English. We could speak English and really little French, really oh, well, limited. Little, little. Little, that's Indian, that's not French. <laughs> little, little. <laughs> we walked together until the end. Mm. We got to Camino de Santiago the same day after 45 days of walking. And we had so much fun. We had so many memories. Mm. And we didn't speak the same the language. The same language. But we could manage to communicate, but also share really personal stories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's call it the day. Let's go for tiramisu, please. Oh, yeah. And also, we're going to talk about war. War! War! war. <laughs> we're going to talk about war.